Hello and welcome to my lecture over professional ethics and responsibilities. In this lesson we'll discuss a couple main topics over really defining what is professional ethics as well as discuss some ethical guidelines for specifically the IT field with discussing ethical guidelines for computer professionals. Ethics is a domain or branch of philosophy that studies morality or really understanding the difference between right and wrong behaviors. But it's kind of fishy sometimes and kind of we see a little bit of gray areas because there are some things we could look at and then say is that ethical or not? Let's think about a couple ethical situations. Is violence always wrong? What if you are protecting your loved ones? Or how about is there such a thing as a harmless lie? And then is it wrong to steal if you're trying to feed your family? Those are just a couple ethical situations for you to think about as you are deeping, digging more into ethical situations and understanding what ethics really is. Not just in the business world, but in your everyday life. When you come across a situation, you need to interpret it and base everything off of ethics. You can't talk about ethics without one of the best policies when it comes to the fundamentals of ethical values, and that's honesty. From the time we wake up each day, we make hundreds of decisions. We don't always have accurate information, but we must base our decisions, our choices, our actions on what we do know. The costs and indirect effects of honesty can usually do little harm. Responsible computer professionals confront issues such as how much risk to privacy, security, or safety is acceptable within a system. And another one is what uses of another company's intellectual properties are acceptable. As you can see, those ethical decisions can be kind of blurry when it comes to what's right and what's wrong. This is why we talk about professional ethics. Professional ethics includes relationships with and responsibilities towards our customers, clients, coworkers, employers, employees, and other stakeholders whose products and services and with whom those choices we make can affect. As a professional, we have a responsibility to act ethically. Many professions have a code of ethics that professionals are expected to abide by, such as in with medical doctors, lawyers, judges, accountants, and IT professionals. There are special aspects to making ethical decisions in professional contexts, but the decisions are based on general ethical principles and theories. As I said, honesty is one of the most fundamental ethical values. However, many ethical problems are more subtle than the choices of being honest or dishonest. Some ethical situations we come across can be controversial. Let's dive into the realm of digital ethics. Now, how we communicate, treat others, how we portray ourselves to others on the internet, and how we protect ourselves are some things we need to think about. And this is where digital ethics comes into play. Now, ethics in general is hard to sell because there's no dollar amount tied to it like a product from a company or a service that's being provided. But how many companies have taken the stance that it is important for us to do the right thing with technology? You can look into that. It's something to think about. When I mention the term digital ethics, um, this means a safe, responsible, and courteous use of the internet or performing any function within information technology. And there's three areas we can look at here. That being privacy, you know, our online privacy, cyberbullying, and plagiarism. When it comes to plagiarism, you should follow the acceptable use policies to keep you safe there and use digital resources productively. Try to avoid digital plagiarism at all times. We have talked about the fair use, um, but so make sure you understand what fair use is when it comes to plagiarism and cases where you can and cannot use digital copies and 
digital productions. Now, professional ethics have several characteristics different from general ethics since the role of professional is special in several ways. Most people affected by the devices, the systems, and services of professionals do not understand how they work and cannot easily judge their quality and safety. A professional advertises his or her expertise and thus has an obligation to prove that. As a professional, you have special responsibilities not just to your customers, but those who are indirectly affected by your decisions as well. Those responsibilities include thinking about the potential risks to privacy and security of one's or someone else's data, as well as to safety, reliability, and ease of use. Because of the complexity of computer software, professionals have an ethical responsibility not just simply to avoid intentional evil, but to exercise a high degree of care and follow good professional practices to reduce the likelihood of problems. You must maintain an expected level of competence and be up to date on current knowledge, technology, and standards of your profession. Let's talk about code of ethics. Many professional organizations have codes of professional conduct. These codes provide a general statement of ethical values and remind professionals that ethical behavior is an essential part of their job and that they have specific professional responsibilities. There are several organizations for the range of professionals included in the general term computer professional. Some of the main ones are the ACM or Association for Computing Machinery and the IEEE or Institute for Electrical and Electronics Engineers. This, this is another one of those main societies in the IT field that you'll become very familiar with. Uh, they developed the Software Engineering Code of Ethics and Professional Practices adopted for and by jointly with the ACM. The codes emphasize the basic ethical values of honesty and fairness. They cover many aspects of professional behavior, including the responsibility to respect confidentiality, to maintain professional competence, to be aware of relevant laws, and honor contracts and agreements. They also stress the responsibility to respect and protect privacy, to avoid harm to others, and to respect property rights. Here are a few of the many principles for producing good systems. Most concern software developers, programmers, and consultants, while some are professional are for professionals in other areas who make decisions about computer systems. Understand what success means for it to be a successful system. Include your users, such as your medical staff, technicians, office workers, and others that are going to be directly affected in the design and testing stages to provide safe and useful systems. You also need to do a thorough, careful job when planning and scheduling a project and when writing bids or contracts. Always make sure to allocate sufficient time and budgeting for testing. Unfortunately, a lot of people cut corners. Next policy we want to talk about is design for real users. People make mistakes with data entry, for example. Catch as many errors as you can to reduce the amount of errors that could be caused by the system. Another one is to no, never assume existing software is safe or correct. Always review and test it. The next policy is to be open and honest about capabilities, safety, and limitations of software. Don't hide that injury could occur if possible. Explain the limitations and uncertainties to users. Give serious thought to default settings. General users may not understand options and issues with security. Always require a convincing case for safety. Safety first as always. Always pay attention to the defaults and make sure you develop communication skills. Now let's talk about introducing ethics methodology. There are two phases we want to talk about when it comes to the ethics methodology. There's the brainstorming phase and then there's the analysis phase. 
in the brainstorming phase, list all the people and organizations affected, all of your stakeholders really. List risks, issues, problems, and consequences. Make sure to list your benefits. Identify who gets each benefit. And when you're brainstorming in cases where there is no simple yes or no decision, but rather one has to choose some action, list all of those possible actions. In the analysis phase, identify responsibilities of the decision makers. You also need to identify rights of all of your stakeholders. Another thing you need to do is consider the impact of the options on those stakeholders, such as the consequences, the risks, the benefits, any type of harms or costs associated. Also, while we're in the analysis phase, categorize each potential action as ethically obligatory, prohibited, or acceptable. And when there are multiple options, select one, considering the ethical merits of each, courtesy to others, practicality, self professional preferences, etc. Make sure that you think about this methodology every time you're implementing a system or making a choice in the IT field. That is it. That's my brief lecture on professional ethics and responsibilities. Make sure, even if you see things that are unethical, that you as an individual demonstrate professional ethics and responsibilities so that others will learn from how you behave so that you can change the culture of that environment. Take care, everyone. Now go out and make those responsible ethical decisions.